Hey Mike. What? what? Who's got next? What's good, y'all? It's your man Hezo. And welcome back to the Blacktop, where I always got next. You feel me? Woo! Four in a row for the Hawks. This team has looked so much different over the last couple weeks. And I really feel like this is the turning point that we were all been waiting to see for the Hawks this season. Another game down to the wire on the road. Just a hard fought game all game. We came out with the dub to extend the win streak. Our best win streak so far this season. Subscribe if you are new. Leave a like on the video. We are on our way to 1,000 subs. We are just under 50 away. So we are right on the cusp. So if y'all can help your boy out, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. And let's get right into it. So we got the Trey versus Luka matchup once again. And actually, this game was more DeJounte versus Luke at the end of the day. But these two players are going to be tied to one another for the rest of their careers. I'm not going to get into all that, man. I'm actually, I'm tired of hearing about it. They talked about it pregame once again. People just need to move on. It, it is what it is. This game started out both offensives firing all, on all cylinders, both teams knocking down threes. But Dallas just kept turning the ball over. They had like seven early turnovers. I mean, they turned the ball over within the first 10 seconds of the game when DeJounte got that steal pretty much on the tip off for an easy fast break layup. Luka got off to a hot start. He had a night, finished with 30 on the night, but he did have a handful of turnovers. But overall, he had a great night of, you know, shooting, he shot efficiently. He was getting guys involved. The Mavs role players really stepped up tonight. They had a lot of guys who was knocking down shots. Atlanta was moving the ball. I mean, Trey, the ball wasn't sticking. Trey wasn't shooting a whole bunch. DeJounte wasn't shooting a whole bunch in the first half. John Collins had a great game offensively. Everybody was eating, man. Everybody eats, and you love to see it. And that's what we saw over these last, you know, during this win streak is the ball movement has just been beautiful. And it looks like an entirely different Hawks offense out there. And they're shooting efficiently outside of Bogdanovich. But both teams, great offensive first half. It was really just back and forth the entire first half. I think we led by three going into the break if i'm not mistaken if it wasn't for those those dallas turnovers they could have been winning the game for most of the game but those turnovers were just decimating them on offense so atlanta had the lead going into the break second half started and dallas got out to an early run started i think in like on an 8-0 run to start the quarter ended up taking the lead Atlanta had some some key turnovers, but Dallas was knocking down open threes. Luka kept finding the guys off the trap that Atlanta kept bringing. Reggie Bullock hit some threes. Spencer Dinwiddie was hot. Christian Wood was hot. And some of these threes that they were hitting were well defended. I mean, Dinwiddie hit, Dinwiddie hit some contested ones and so did Christian Wood. And it just seemed like it was Dallas's night from three and that they were going to take control in the second half. But Atlanta fought back. They started knocking down shots. DeJounte had a, an excellent second half, an excellent fourth quarter. I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. Made of the run of their own, but had so many missed opportunities in transition off getting steals and everything. And it really, it kind of hindered Atlanta because they could have jumped out to a, and created a bigger cushion going into the fourth quarter. But they had so many missed opportunities in transition with just not being able to catch the basketball a lot of the times and just not being able to finish layups. And that really... Just again, it put a hindrance on Atlanta going into the fourth, but they did close out the third quarter on a, a, a small little run to take a one point lead going into the fourth quarter. Fourth quarter was back and forth the entire quarter. But I want to talk about DeJounte for just a second. The fourth quarter that he had, not only on the offensive end, because he carried Atlanta on the offensive end the entire fourth quarter, but the job that he was doing on Luka with denying him the ball. Every time Luka gave up the rock, DeJounte would be right up in him denying the ball, and they couldn't swing it back to him for him to get into that isolation or get into a switch. And DeJounte was really the one of the main reasons why Atlanta was able to pull out this victory was the job that he was doing on offense and the deny ball defense that he was playing on Luka in the second half and in the fourth quarter because DeAndre Hunter was in foul trouble, which a lot of those were ticky-tack fouls. I'm going to talk about that in my final takeaways. Atlanta really had to battle the whistle tonight, but DeJounte, man, I give him so much credit. And I really just give the Atlanta offense a ton of credit in general, as well as the Dallas offense, because they had a lot of guys step up. They had a lot of guys in double figures. Atlanta had a, guy, a lot of guys in double figures. John Collins had a great game. Trey didn't have a, a, a super buy, uh, buy Box score popping uh, game, but I'm going to talk about him as well. My final takeaways because I loved what I saw from Trey tonight. DeAndre Hunter had a solid game offensively for the minutes that he 
did get, again, he was in foul trouble the entire night. Bogdanovich, he was like the only one that, that struggled again. And that's one of the things I'm going to talk about in my final takeaways. So y'all be patient. This game came down to the wire once again. And it was just a beautiful sight to see Atlanta able once again to close out the game. Led by DeJounte Murray. He had a huge clutch three in the fourth quarter. And then Trey hits the beautiful floater in the paint to give us, a, I think, a six-point lead. With like 45 seconds left or so. 35 seconds left. Just a beautiful floater to really not really put a dagger but it was pretty much put us into a comfortable lead to where we can seal this victory trey knocks down his clutch free throws and that's all she wrote luca had a couple contested threes at the end of the game and credit the atlanta defense they had a lot of defensive possessions towards the end of the game where they came out and prevailed and again you got to credit the hawks man as, as much as probably a lot of people don't want to say it, atlanta's done a great job over these last couple games and finding their identity on offense and finding a rhythm on offense, playing defense and closing out ball games, not going to that ISO ball and sticking with what's working the entire game and playing a full 48 minute game as opposed to only half a game where you collapse in the second half like we've seen a lot of times throughout the season. Great win tonight. Just an overall great win. So I'm going to get into my final takeaways. And number one was the fouling. Dallas got the benefit of the whistle tonight. And it really, it got to a point where it was really getting out of hand, man. I mean, they were calling Atlanta for just illegal screen after illegal screen. Just ticky-tack fouls, man. Dre was in foul trouble. JC was in foul trouble. Okongwu was in foul trouble. It seemed like every time Atlanta was either trying to make a run or Dallas was on a run, Atlanta would have a bad foul. Now, I'm not denying that some of them were fouls, but it, they weren't, it wasn't getting called the same, the same way on the other end. I mean, Dre, Dre is one of the players that gets called for some ridiculous fouls, but he can't get a foul the other end. He goes to the paint and gets hacked and doesn't get a call. And it's been consistently like that all season. When Scott Foster is officiating a game for the Hawks, it just has never been good because he always favors the opposing team when Scott Foster is officiating against the Hawks. And it's, you could check the tape, man. Like, you could check the records on that. I'm not just a, a, a pissed off fan bitching about the refs, man. Like, it, I was on Twitter, man. I seen, I saw so many other people complaining about the refs tonight. So, I'm not the only one, man. So, before you come at me, if you're a Mavericks fan, before you come at me in the comments saying, oh, stop bitching about the refs. Bro, the, it was a one-sided called game tonight. I mean, you could see the, the free throw discrepancy. Luka was living at the line. He shot like 12, 12 free throws or whatever, and some of them were ticky-tack. But Atlanta was able to withstand it and was able to prevail in the end, even with the bad officiating. So number two is Nate's coaching rotation. And I don't mean that in a good way. I really question Nate's coaching rotation. Well, really, Nate is a coach in general. Y'all already know that. But I'm just specifically talking about the rotation. I don't understand why Jalen Johnson has fallen out of the rotation, number one. So let me start there. This kid was playing with so much confidence. He was playing his best basketball. And he has just basically fallen completely out of the rotation since Clint Capella has come back. And we're basically running an eight-man rotation right now. And i am be honest with you, that's not going to get it done. Like, you have to have another guy, at least a nine-man rotation through the regular season. Now, if you want to run an eight-man rotation come playoff time that's fine but you have to have enough bodies that you can count on to consistently be able to win games and with Jalen Johnson that the level he was playing at there's no excuse for him falling out of the rotation completely I can understand if you cut his minutes but completely not being in the rotations that's just that's poor coaching that's unacceptable to me so the second part of that is I, I truly just I can't wrap my head around why Bogdanovich continues to play 30 plus minutes while AJ Griffin is is playing relatively like 10 to 15 less minutes than Bogdanovich when AJ Griffin is clearly, clearly playing at a higher level at the moment. Bogdanovich is still in a shooting slump. He shot a little bit better tonight, but he still didn't shoot the ball well. He was two for eight from three and five for 13 overall. And some of the shots that he was taking were bad shots. And that was that's normally what we see out of Trey or DeJounte or something like that. But we saw it out of bogey tonight. And it was really frustrating because he played the majority of the fourth quarter with JC on the bench. Now, I know JC had four fouls, but he still has two more fouls the entire fourth quarter. And after the game that JC was having, I truly don't understand why Bogey is in the game over both AJ Griffin 
and JC in the fourth quarter when he's having a poor shooting night. He's not a good defender. And the night that, that AJ Griffin was having and JC were having, those two guys you have to look to over a bogey in the closeout situation. Now, I know JC came back in later in the fourth quarter, but he didn't come back in until about the three and a half minute mark when it was still a tight ball game. And again, AJ Griffin played minimal minutes in the second half and Bo Bogey just continues to get way more minutes. And I just don't understand it, man. Like what more does AJ Griffin have to do to get consistently 25 plus minutes when he's playing at such a high level and he has so much of a deeper bag offense Offensively than bogey does i'll be honest i think it might be time to shop bogey i like bogey i really do but i think it's time to shop him and see what maybe what type of package out there that you can get for him because if he's having a bad shooting night he really doesn't do much for this offense or really doesn't do much for the team if he's not shooting the ball well and that's a problem so number three is trey and and i mean this in a good way what I have saw from Trey over this win streak has just been great basketball, really. I mean, I look at the game tonight, and no, he did not have a, an eye-popping box score. He, he finished the thing, I think, 18 and 12 on the night. But it was the way he was playing the game tonight, the way he was controlling the tempo, the way he was controlling the offense. He looked like a pure floor general tonight, finished the night with 12 assists. He was not forcing shots. He was not taking step back logo threes he only took one three on the night and this is the trade that we need in my opinion if we're going to be a successful team now i'm not i'm not mad if he's shooting threes but it's the type of threes i don't want to see these step back logo threes and trey had an outstanding game tonight he did have four turnovers and that's fine but he countered that with 12 assists and when you can finish the night with 12 assists and 18 points that's a great night, especially when you're shooting efficiently, and then he hits a beautiful floater at the end of the game to pretty much, not again, not seal the game, but put us in a very good position to win the ball game. I loved what I saw out of Trey tonight. I loved what I'm seeing from Trey recently, and, and I hope really that he has found kind of his his identity in terms of this is what I need to be as a leader and this is who I need to be for this team to be successful to where it's not all about me. I got to look for my guys off pick and rolls. I got to look for my guys in, in, in normal ball movement. Again, I just, I love what I saw from Trey tonight. Not eye popping numbers. Yes, Luca outplayed him. I get all that. But it was just a great overall game for Trey. And that's what all you can ask for is when a guy is, is running the offense like a point guard should be doing with getting guys involved and not ball hogging and jacking up piss poor shots. Shout out to Trey, man. Excellent game. Excellent run over these last couple weeks. Trey is back, baby. So I'm gonna pretty much leave it there, man. Uh, that is pretty much all I have for this game recap. Again, a huge win on the road. Four in a row. Let's see if we can get another win. Extend it to five. Extend it to six. Extend it to seven. This team looks so much better. So much better recently over these last couple weeks. Really since the new year has started. And just playing much better basketball. We're now one game back over 500. And really we are starting to see what this team could be capable of come playoff time. And I think we could really be dangerous come playoff time. Leave your thoughts down in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about this game overall. Overall. Let me know what you think about it going uh, the, the Hawks, you know, going forward. Leave a like on the video, and I will catch y'all next episode.